This is Chris Potter, and I'm here today with Clay Dalrymple. Clay played with the uh, Philadelphia Phillies and the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, he was on uh, three World Series teams with the Baltimore Orioles, 69, 70, and 71. Uh, he won the World Series in 1970. Uh, Clay, uh, you're here to tell us a couple of stories today, uh, one uh, regarding uh, G-Mont. Well, <clears throat> G-Mont was a real bear when it came to checking you out, uh, make sure you were in your room curfew, curfew time. And uh, especially if we were in Chicago, because we're playing the Cubs day games. And so he wanted everybody in their bed by 12 o'clock, or in their room by 12 o'clock. And I was the type of guy that had trouble going to sleep at night with the neon still on. I had to be out there amongst everybody and going with the program and getting with it. And so this one night, I had a really good date with a hot chick, and I wanted to go out, and I wanted to spend some time with her. And so I was pretty sure he was going to call the room, and I thought, God, I'm really asking for trouble here. So I called my roommate at 12 o'clock, and he answers, and he says, Rumi, he says, you can just call. I said, oh, God, okay. So my roommate was Johnny Callison. And so I said, oh, man. Okay, I hung up and I called back, and the hotel answers, and I said, give me Gene Moxwell. And they connect me with Gene Moxwell. And Gene answers the phone. Hello? Gene, it's Clay. Where are you? I said, I just got in the room. Johnny told me you called. You in your room? Yeah. All right, stay there. Okay. I hung up the phone, went back, and danced the rest of the night. <laughs> Well, uh, it sounded like uh, Gene was quite the guy to play for. Uh, you also mentioned a story uh, about uh, uh, in the minor leagues. I Yeah, the minor leagues. I had a lot of stories about the minor leagues because you're a rookie and, and everybody's picking on you. The, the Amarillo, Texas was the first team I played for in A-ball. And uh, so I get to, uh, to Amarillo and they don't have anything except they had a trainer who was also our bus driver. I mean, you had to be a little bit of everything, and I'm surprised it wasn't the manager of the team, too. Um, but Peter Chin was was our, our trainer and our bus driver. But Peter had nothing to work with. The only thing he had was his hands, and that was it. We didn't have uh, a Whirlpool tub, and uh, we didn't have, we didn't even have ice. Uh, they didn't have ice makers, you know. It was really pathetic. So, I'm in, I'm in the batter's, uh, in the batter's box, and I foul a ball off onto my foot. And when you foul a ball off on your foot, it's hard to to tell you what that pain is at that moment because it just drives that baseball right into your instep, and man, it does hurt. And you've got those those cleats that are not. They're, they don't have anything to them, uh, especially like a, they're not like a football cleat. They're, they're real kangaroo, um, kangaroo. And so I, I'm, I, I go back into the clubhouse limping, and Peter Chen says, uh, "Tell you what you do." He says, "You, we don't have any ice or anything." But he says, "Put your foot in the toilet, and keep flushing the toilet, and the cold water." He says, "It'd be good for your foot." I said, hey, that's a great idea. So I'm sitting there, and I'm flushing the toilet with my foot in the toilet. And then who walks in but the old-timers, the 28-year-olds, Frank Murray, second baseman. He said, what in the hell are you doing? And I told him, and he starts laughing. Him and the other guy, Lenny Added, his roommate, they were the two old-timers on the team. And they had to doubt that, that Dalrymple's got his foot in a Chinese whirlpool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I had a lot of fun in uh, in Amarillo, Texas. There was a lot of those kind of stories to tell. They were funny. Um, and then, of course, this this is my favorite here. This picture was taken of me. Uh, the first picture ever taken of me in a, in a professional uniform, major league uniform anyway, when I was with Philadelphia. And they told me, here, we're going to take a picture of you, and it's time to, uh, to smile. Well, I... 
I was nervous. I didn't have a smile. And so I forced smile. That's a that's a forced smile. Now if I was younger, I'd do it and I'd copy it, but you wouldn't it wouldn't be the same guy that you're seeing there anyway. <laughs> so there's no sense in even trying. But that was good. Well, Clay, let's let's see if we can get you to smile like that. No, you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it won't come out that way. Believe me. Well, it sounds like you had uh, quite a fun time playing professional ball. Uh, what did you do after baseball? After baseball, I became a uh, salesman in the plumbing field. I was selling plumbing supplies to wholesalers. Uh, as a matter of fact, I even did that in the off season while I was still playing Major League Baseball. Uh, I ran into a, a manufacturer's rep who uh, sold faucets and uh, all of the tubular material underneath your sink that uh, you change and you get under there and you whack the, your knuckles on the sides all the time, changing them. Uh, yeah, I sold all that stuff. Um, but then when I moved back to the West Coast where my family was, I got a job in the food, uh, food business uh, as a salesman uh, to uh, food service company, uh, a Cisco branch, and, and we sold uh, restaurants and schools and hospitals, and, uh, and that's, that's how I, until I retired and came to Gold Beach, Oregon. And I love it here. Well, it is a very beautiful town. Um, uh, during your career uh, in baseball, who do you believe the toughest pitcher that you faced? Oh, probably uh, uh, the toughest pitcher to face. Uh, I would say probably the, the the number one pitchers on the on the list uh, that you that you go down are always the toughest. Uh, the Drysdales, the Colfaxes, uh, those guys are always up there, and, and they 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 pitch well because they they know how to pitch, and they know then they got the good stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're always going to be hard for you to hit. Um, I never, uh, never had a pitcher that I loved to hit off of. Uh, there was some that I did better off of than others, but uh, there was none that you really ran up there to say, "Well, this is just going to be uh, a lot of fun." I had uh, an opportunity one time to hit off of uh, a kid that was from my hometown, Nelson Bryles, who's no longer with us. Uh, God rest his soul. But, Riles was a good right-handed pitcher who pitched against uh, uh, pitch for, for Pittsburgh. And in the World Series, he, he beat us a game, as a matter of fact. He beat us uh, in one of the uh, games uh, against uh, Baltimore Orioles. And uh, Nelson, though I, I played against him in the other league when I was with the Phillies, uh, and I saw him, uh, for some reason, I knew when Nelson, what Nelson was going to could throw. Uh, he didn't tell me what he was going to throw, and we didn't know each other. But my brother coached him. My brother was a baseball coach, and eight year old, eight years older than me. My brother coached baseball in high school, and he coached Nelson in uh, Chico, California. And uh, my uh, my instincts were telling me that he was getting a curveball or he was getting a fastball in his glove. I could I could see it because his. His hand, you could see more of that bottom part of his hand when it wasn't in his glove, it was going to be a curveball. And when it was a fastball, his hand was in a little bit further in his hand. And it was just something I happened to pick up. And I tried to tell my other teammates this, and they never saw it. They couldn't see it like I could. So I could see Nelson's pitches. And so I saw him load up a spitter one time on me. And he was having trouble getting me out because I could tell what he was going to throw to me, so he thought he'd throw a spitter. And I saw him go and get the spit. And I didn't ask the umpire to say, take a look at the ball. I wanted him to throw that spitter because a spitter only breaks down. It's not like a knuckleball that's going to break in all different directions. It only breaks down. So if you're prepared for it, it's not near as big a shot to you when it breaks. Sure enough, it broke down and I hit it over the right field wall. Oh, wow. So that was an experience that I never had an opportunity to ever tell Nelson before he passed on that I could read his pitches. Now, being a catcher, did... Um <laughs> Did you ever call a spitter, or you know, with your? Yes, I uh, I caught uh, a couple of pitchers that uh, uh, had spitters. Um, let's see if I can remember who they were. Bob Buell uh, was one. Who Bob Buell? Uh, he told me when he was going to throw the spitter. He had a signal to give to the catcher that he had it loaded, 
And so all you did was just put the target up, and you always held it down low because the spitter, as I said, would break down a little bit. It always broke down. You would get a ground ball on a spitter. Good double play ball for the spitter. And a spitter is not a pitch that you don't control too well. Um, they say the reason they outlawed is because they didn't know how, where it was going. Guys that know this throw spitter know exactly where it's going. Uh, Bob Buell could throw it outside corner, inside corner. I mean, he knew where it was going. He didn't use that much spit. But there was one guy that used a lot of spit. His name was Bo Belinsky. And a lot of people will remember that name. Bo Belinsky was famous in Hollywood for dating a Hollywood starlet, you know. But Bo was uh, not a famous pitcher. He was only famous in his right of who he dated. Uh, he probably liked the neons more than I did, but <laughs> he was quite more successful than I was, too. But uh, Belinsky, when he threw a spitter, you could see the spit fly off it. Now, that's a spitter that you know he doesn't know where it's going. If he's got that much saliva on the ball, he doesn't know where it's going. But that was a bad spitter. That's a spitter I didn't like. Well, uh Clay, I, I do appreciate you joining us today. Chris, thank you for your time. I've enjoyed our time with you. And, pleasure. Uh, enjoy our, our wonderful country. Thank you. Uh, this is Chris Potter, and uh, if you'd like to obtain any more information regarding Clay Dalrymple or obtaining his autograph, please visit our website at www.chrispottersports.com. Thank you, and thanks for tuning in.